I realize it's the end of the season. This video probably has the shelf life of a mayfly, but I want to do it anyway because I'm excited about it. And really, this is just more for me. But if you want to come along on the journey and see me break down my last 200 games pushing from 80 to 90, I know it's not an impressive feat, but granted, this is what I'm working with. Second season in a row that I just, what is Dara doing on his free to play account? Oh, I think I can have those cards. I think I can put that deck together. And uh, I just went with it. So if you want to stick around, I appreciate it. My name is Michael. This is Set Gaming. Let's get into it. First off, yes, this is Dara's list. Uh, I watched him play it. Um, he had about eight hours of VODs on Twitch and I, I devoured it, man. I, I tried to like just nitpick, see how he snaps, see how his play patterns. And I learned a lot. And really one of the key things that frustrated me at first with it was he's such a high MMR. Yes, he plays top players. He plays people who stream snipe him. But the biggest takeaway was like, man, how many bots he fights. How many like you just watch me like, what is this deck? Like nobody on the ladder is running this deck. It's a testament to how bad the matchmaking is that you can be such a high MMR that your competition really dies. But it got me noticing on my climb how important bots are to your cube acquisition so i'm gonna like show a spreadsheet i did and this is really gamey i'm not a spreadsheet excel guy uh, i don't really know how to use it beyond the most basic functions and i don't even know if you can see this thing but i think it's an interesting discussion point on how my climb went these last 200 games so 200 game, 214 games played with a 50% win rate, a cube rate of 0.4. Those are all bad numbers or like at least very mediocre numbers. But the key takeaway I want to show you is the bots played here. So I had 17 matches, roughly 8% of my matches against bots, but they accounted for 54% or 54 of the cubes of the 93 cubes. So roughly 50% of, of the cubes I needed to climb from 80 to 90 came from bots. Another 18 uh, came from people donating. I had three people donate me two eight cube matches and then one two cube match. Again, a very small sample size, three matches making up roughly 20% of the cubes I needed to climb. And then lastly, um, ramp here being 19 cubes. This is the third most popular deck right in line with Galactus, but I steamrolled this deck, 75% win rate, 19 cubes gained. Uh, this was just a very easy deck to snap into because they're playing Sandman. They get very cocky with Dr. Doom. I know what their play pattern is. They're trying to play Dr. Doom, Magneto, or Odin, I think. So a very um, deck susceptible to intel and uh, you know being able to play around. So right there, you have almost 80% of the cubes I needed to climb 10 ranks in three very specific matches that accounted for such a small amount of the games I played. Basically, 80% of the cubes I needed to climb came from 15% of the games I played. That is so disheartening to me that I am just essentially, every time I fire up a game, there's like an over 80% chance that it's irrelevant to my climb because I'm just trying not to lose cubes. And again, this is playing a free-to-play, budget-friendly deck that doesn't have you know i can play against the thanos and shuri's but i'm i'm largely treading water as you see right here i thought this was interesting I mean, you probably can't see but I'll, I'll tell you about it anyway galactus was the fourth highest amount of games i played 11 i had a 36 percent win rate against them losing 13 total cubes just abysmal i'm actually sad that i was this bad against galactus i don't know what happened i, I think i'm just really bad at like spotting it uh, and again, I think I just really didn't pull Arrow in my Galactus matches a surprising amount. I think I'll, I remember Gal like arrowing Galactus once. Second list, Thanos, 20 matches. This was really surprising to me. 20 matches, 35% win rate, but only minus one cube. Uh, I attribute this, again, watching Dara play against Thanos decks. And I think Thanos decks and Thanos players, at least the ones I was playing, seem so greedy and confident. The games I could stay in, they didn't get Quinjet. They really didn't realize how bad some bases were for them. Bases that uh, really restrict Thanos players not being able to play three lanes and go wide. And they're kind of, you know, if they don't hit Lockjaw and they don't hit Quinjet, their early game is really mediocre. 
being able to exploit that gave me a near, you know, blank slate as far as win record against them despite our cube gain, despite a terrible win rate. And then this is surprising. Uh, Shiri, I felt like I was playing Shiri Thanos a lot. I would have guessed it was like 40% of the games up here at the final count. Now this is the last couple of days. Maybe people were tired of these decks. Only 31% against Galactus, Thanos, and Shuri. You know, my Shuri win rate, less than 50%, negative five cubes, but was almost 17% of the matches I played. So very heavy presence. Playing a deck that uh, is dead in the water against Shuri, I think is a massive mistake at the end of this season. I think going into next season, if Shuri isn't nerfed, we're gonna you're going to have to probably be playing Shang-Chi Arrow in any deck that isn't Shiri Thanos and trying to go toe to toe with these decks or having some some really sneaky tech. That's really all I wanted to highlight with this video. If you've got this far, you've got the gist of it. Just a couple other things I thought were really interesting. The RNG factor, if you can see this here, 20 games. So but roughly 10% of my games I decided were completely decided by like RNG. And that's usually just base RNG. You know, X Mansion just completely one side flipping. In my opponent's favor or my favor you know somebody putting a card into a empty lane that hadn't been revealed yet and it was like space thrown and they threw their like ice man in there uh, district x games weird world games the bases are just not fair to, to one side or the other you know like restrictive and not a lot of gamesmanship you know maybe if they had dr doom they were winning that game attributed that to an rng thing very bad against patriot surfer not surprising. I mean, the, the good cards deck was essentially really bad in the, the meta last season just because the go wide buff your stuff stuff was so popular. The stuff stuff. That's a good one. Some stuff that was just not existent. Mr. Negative decks did not exist. Ongoing decks, ongoing destroyer did not exist. You know, lockjaw decks, surprisingly not as popular as I thought they'd be. That, I think that's a very strong deck. Pool three only. Death Wave, uh, kind of popular, I guess, still. Still surprising, only nine games played in 200. I'm going to give honorable mention to She-Hulk being the most disruptive card I was not accounting for. Also Hood, I've said that in my last video. The 1-6 Demon, I just never seem to account for. But She-Hulk also, like, decks that were passing on turn five, I would just seemingly never give them credit for it. And it wasn't just She-Hulk Infinites, it was like, she-Hulk, uh, Shuri She-Hulk, and then uh, like a Titania. Inability to account for where they were going to play was just such a problem um, for my deck in general. You know, I, I kind of, there's, I have starred good cards. Kind of looping into that, that was Mirror, Doom Wave. Sometimes it was hard to tell if my opponent was playing Doom Wave, good cards, or Ramp that just didn't, you know, hit, hit their specific cards. But uh, again, like my last video, the, uh, Doom was really, Doom and Arrow, were really the cards you had to watch out for on turn six. They weren't playing Thanos or Shuri or Galactus. I was surprised. I didn't really see much Serum Miracle at all, despite how much, I guess, credit the community or the creators give the power of Serum Miracle. I did not see it. Uh, a lot of people were playing the, the toxic Luke Cage kind of thing, which I think is very good in a Thanos. But at my MMR, or my ranking, I didn't see Thanos enough that, that I thought that was uh, valuable deck to kind of counter the meta you know i, I kind of grouped the sierra variants i think early on into decks that may have been luke cage decks but did see a fair amount of sarah decks felt like i was pretty good against them and the uh the other takeaway was the deck was very strong i think i mentioned this already very strong against ramp finally i think the other surprising thing was jank i put up there and i I say jank, they're probably just creator decks, you know, people like Milky or TSLG or Jeff Hoagland, the people that put out content daily, daily decks that are just a little off meta, a little unusual. I was probably playing those decks and just didn't realize it. Kind of an abysmal rate versus the unknown, which again goes to show, I think, how powerful not knowing what your opponent is playing, being unpredictable. Again, not sure how good those decks are against the top of the meta. The Shiri's, the Thanos's. So overall, just a really interesting, you know, a snapshot of 10 levels at a fairly competitive area of the ladder. I'm 2000 collection level, I should have mentioned that way earlier. But knowing that it takes roughly 200 games playing very mediocre, um, slightly winning Marvel Snap, how many cubes I needed to gain from bots 
is just really disheartening. Um, I don't know if they're going to fix it. I, I feel like if they got rid of bots or did something different than this, we'd be in a much worse place. I feel like the if you took away bots, the climbing would just be so much more of a grind. But I guess I'm grateful that they're there. But, um, you know, overall, it's just it's, it's just a weird experience. So this has been long enough. No one's still watching this, but I, I thought it was interesting. You know, I encourage you to try to keep some some stats like this. I think it's it's an interesting experiment. It really was eye opening to me. But uh, we'll see in the next one. And good luck in the March season. Hopefully they do something about this Sherry Thanos thing. And uh, we're not just seeing Galactus Nimrod join the, uh, the frustration as the big bads and the tier ones as we struggle. We'll see you in the next one. Stay safe out there, snappers.